Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your host, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Back to the Big Apple, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're here live at Big Data NYC as part of Strata and Hadoop World. Larry Weber is here, he's the Director of Cloud Services at IBM. Larry, great to see you, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me. So, we were talking a little off camera, but this is sort of a new part of IBM. It new is. New capability within, the, within Pitiano's analytics group. It's not part of the, the cloud group, it's part of the analytics group, that's why you're here at Strata plus Hadoop World. So, Give us the lay of the land. Where do you fit within the IBM organization? Yeah, sure. So, so Cloud Data Services, as it is, uh, was created earlier this year, very beginning of the year. I think I came on board to the, that team around March. Um, but it's something that started, I think, last year. You think about, you know, hey, we acquired a company called Clouded uh, early in the year, and around the same time, we actually came out with Bluemix. And Bluemix is a platform as a service. Uh, came out with a handful of services in it, and it was around our, our you know, CEO basically saying, hey, we're going to do cloud and do it real serious. And um, since that period of time, it's been about a year, Bluemix has exploded with different services, different you know, things that are in it, whether it play with for developers, um, anything from Internet of Things all the way through Watson itself, different services are put there. At the beginning of this year, though, it was decided that from a data perspective, we we're going to have our own division wrapped around cloud data services. So composable data services, and not just a database, but it could be anything from Cloudint, could be DashDB, could be Big Insights or Hadoop, um, and even have Spark as a beta in there. And so what we're doing here, it's almost like the Wild West, right? It's, it's, um, we're, we're doing it around uh, the developers and the people that are leveraging this. It's inherently different than, let's say, back in the day, you know, you go in to talk to somebody, hey, here's a PowerPoint, we're going to deliver this over the next, I don't know, uh, 10 months or whatever it is. We need a lot of integrators. Here, I can actually go out, and, and I was last week even, um, hey, check this out, look at this. Oh wait, hold on, I'm going to show you. I can go in, show, like, ingesting Twitter feeds, live into the database, show the results. People can get started right away with this stuff, which is inherently different than some of the old, you know, legacy systems that we've had. So the mission is to, to package these composable services, and then how do you go to market? Yeah, so, well, most of it is around Bluemix right now as a the delivery platform for, for uh, uh, cloud data services. But it's really looking at the developer Okay, the developer and the builder. Um, Cloud, when it actually came around, was, had a great, great legacy around helping developers and helping them build new apps and the latest, greatest technologies based on their, their you know, Cloud, it's a JSON data store, um, build the greatest apps on that. And what we've done is we've actually expanded that portfolio to say, well, there's, well, there's a lot of different data types people need. It's not just Cloud or JSON, it's not just a data warehouse. Could be Hadoop, could be Spark, could be streams for all I know. It, we w really want to be able to access and allow these developers and builders, give them the tools. Go create the next company, create the next program, the next application, and do it today. Um, and, and I think a lot of that is around like, how we go to market too is one thing I, I was great that came around from Clouded was you know, we have developers in IBM and engineers. Okay? We tap them, they build awesome, great technology. Clouded also has a group called Dev Advocates or De Developer, Advo uh, De Developer Advocacy. And what they do, they're kind of like, I'd say like data ninjas based in their domain. Their job is to study the data, look what customers are asking for, help customers out, and just build solutions based on it, and then even open source it. You have trouble getting like some third party data, whether it be from Salesforce. We actually can actually, the developers will actually, developer advocates will go out there and build and grow and, and create the structure and then give it away and say, hey, anyone wants to access this, go at it. And it's phenomenal. It's, it's a different way that we're actually helping out the environment build out new applications. Yeah, it's interesting, when IBM announced Bluemix, I guess it was early last year, is that right, April of last year maybe? And it was, you kind of put it out there, hey, we're here. Yep. And it was a little unclear, to me anyway, you, you know, what was going to happen, and you're right, it's just exploded. Um, I mean, it's become the sort of tip of the spear for development yeah. within the IBM ecosystem. Where are you seeing the uptake, you mentioned you know, everything, IOT, sure, you know, streaming sure. apps, real time. You know, are you seeing any patterns develop? Well, let's think. Um, there's been a couple, right? People like to kick the tires. And so a lot of the hot topics be like Watson, IOT, people will go look around and play with it. Right. Um, I, I've seen two different fronts here, specifically to the data services. So actually there's a number of use cases around data warehousing, but I've seen a lot of people come in and say, you know, all right, I've got an existing data warehouse. 
I need to do something today. I don't have access to all those you know, repositories right now. I have to ask permission. Or, hey, I've hit my limit, but I want to build something, or I want to try something out, even just throw some new reports up. And, and this is where we see a lot of traction, right? Hey, just roll up the cloud, a monthly service. I can now take data off, play with it. Try oh, wait, it. wait a second, awesome. Um, and so that's a big one. It's, it's really the, the, it's the time more than the cost. This will allow, enables different people in the organization to get answers faster. So, um, what about, like you were saying, and Dave was saying, you know, Internet of Things, um, other use cases, are you um, designing it to start with a certain set of use cases where you say, this is our sweet spot, ah. and then, you know, we'll leave these others for second priority? Um, or yeah. are you, you following the market and following developer interest? I think both, okay, and, and okay. I think early on it was a little bit of guesswork. These are kind of what we're hearing, and then over the past year, you've seen the market kind of dictate what we come out with. Um, the best way to think of it, and, and some of the ways it developed was, I, I tell the story, I have two little boys, and you know, one of the things I love and hate are Legos, right? It's like you wake up in the morning, it's like you step on Legos, step ah, on. Darn, you know, right? And, and it's one of those things that these are like building blocks. Okay, they truly are, these services, but then again, like Legos sometimes have the kits, these overly expensive cars, and you get the little manual instruction for it. We have boilerplates or blueprints to do things like Internet of Things that would then allow different services in there, and then you actually pull it up, read it, and say, oh, this is how I get started. This okay. is where I begin. Tell us about some of these blueprints, and then also tell us about some of the composable service. Give, give us a little more detail on those, and, and maybe dive a little deeper on DashDB. Yeah, sure. So, so some of the blueprints and, and their stuff, I mean, one of the things with Bluemix that kind of gets me is you can look today and then look next week and there's new stuff already there. Yeah. Uh, and it's not just limited to just IBM technology, we have third party technologies in there as well. It's, it's a bigger ecosystem. Um, but there are things like um, Internet of Things is definitely one of them, leverages Cloudint as NoSQL. Hey, you can drop off your, your smart device, put it on the Cloudint. Um, you have, oh, with the partnership with Apple, um, hey, I want to develop an app for an Apple phone. That starter kit is already in there. You open it up, it tells you what services you're going to need. And, and by the way, most of the stuff is free to play with. So you're like, ah, let's kick the tires. Let's start out something new. Let's develop a new app. And then, whoa, wait a second, this is really taking off. Now let's pay, let's you know, invest. Um, there's, geez, there's, there's other development starter kits, um, different language types that it supports. Um, I'm trying to think of a few others. Oh, one that's, that's fun, it's not, I don't know if it's a starter kit for it, but uh, it's Twitter. We have um, the Twitter partnership, we take uh, Twitter data and you can actually load that live into any of the data services you want. Um, so, okay. So sorry to interrupt oh, this. Sorry. So in that, in that example, a developer gets access to the Twitter Firehose through you guys, is that right? Or? Yeah, it's actually, it's a service called Insights for Twitter, if I remember, and it's mm -hmm. free up to a certain amount of, of tweets. Um, but yeah, you can actually go, I could roll up right now, you know, call up, uh, hey, I'm going to do a, a tweet on the cube and see how many people have been tweeting about that, pull that into, let's say, DashDB, and then immediately look at it there, and I could throw, um, you know, what's Watson Analytics or whatever it may be to look at that, you know, uh, study that, that trend or whatever's coming in off the Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. So for those who, who've grown up with IBM and package software mm -hmm. and who know about uh, DB2 and Netiza and the blue extensions, Tell us where, where um, this fits and um, how it's different from package software. So in other words, relate, relate this, the, these services to those of us who are accustomed to you know, traditional on-premise package software and, and how it comes together and gets delivered. Sure, sure, so these are managed services. So we, they're, they're running in the background in the cloud. You don't have to mess with them. Um, you know, as with regards to DB2 and, and, and uh, Natiza, I mean, one of, one of our, our you know, great products is a product called DashDB. DashDB came out at the very end of last year. Uh, we recently relaunched it with its MPP capabilities. Um, but DashDB itself is the columnar blue technology that came with DB2, right? We took that, threw it into the cloud. But we didn't leave it there. There was, a, you know, blue for cloud for a period of time that we had out there. And, but we took that. We said, wait a second, let's do something different. We have Natiza, and one of the great things is that they have integrated analytics. And in Natiza box, you throw you know, data at it, you're doing analytics physically within the box, it's super fast. Let's take that and marry that with Blue. And then we've done that in DashDB. So we have our capabilities. We have the full on Natiza analytics inside of that, that, that cluster that's in the cloud. 
Um, and so another thing around DashDB is, and this gets back to a lot of the integrated services and composable services, when we acquired CloudInt, one of the first things we did was we said, wait, we have all these customers that are creating this big data around JSON documents, massive stores of JSON documents. How do you analyze that? Right? It's not the easiest thing to then extract that data and put it into a database. That's like somewhere. one of the hottest topics around now, which is, you know, don't just give me, you know, some JavaScript, you know, interface, but how can I get at it with the simplicity more of a SQL database? Yeah, so, so what we've done here is early on, um, we built integration natively with DashDB from CloudIt. So if you have data stored in CloudIt, massive amounts of JSON documents, essentially press a button, all of a sudden creates the schemas itself within DashDB and then all of a sudden you have a data warehouse of all that data that's there, and you can analyze it now, today. Throw some reports at it, and, and you've got that, that you know, wow, goodness. The, the, what's really cool about this is synchronous. So if, as more data is going back into uh, Clouded, it's now going to update and populate what you have there in the data warehouse. And so that's just one story of you know, this idea of, of composable services and integration across the data source. So why did you do Dash DB? What was the initial motivation? The initial motivation, oh geez, now you're getting into history here. <laughs> um, so there was a project back in the day, and this is before my involvement with it, was uh, DB2 for cloud. Yeah. And it was essentially okay. taking DB2, putting it in the cloud, and then taking that blue technology and then looking at it in the cloud as well. Um, a lot of it was, was you know, hosted in different sites outside of Bluemix, um, but now we're leveraging the entire Bluemix infrastructure and the ability now to, to speak and create with other And so sources. essentially you wanted to expand the scope, not beyond just DB2, right? You had all these other technologies that... Yeah, that and that's why we rebranded it too. That's why when you, it's dash DB, it's, it's our own name for it. It's, it's not necessarily DB2, even though it's fully compatible with it because the underpinnings are. Um, oh, and another good thing around that we do have native Oracle compatibility, because we've taken that with DB2 as well, um, as well as Natiza compatibility to the an extent. The TL SQL capability. Yep, yep. So, so that, well, that yeah, the so, content from there. So yeah, I mean, and you've got a lot of stuff going on. You've DB2, Blue Acceleration, running, you know, little Endian on Power 8. I mean, that's and like the, the, uh, the, the perfect big data infrastructure, right? I mean, because you're going to have advantages in that, you know, with your pipelining and other capabilities to run super fast analytics. It's, I mean, yeah, and it, I've seen, there's been a crazy different number of use cases around this, right? I said like one of the, the probably the number one one was, hey, I want to do something today. Where do I get it? How do I, I don't have the funding. Let's go out to the cloud. Let's roll up an instance. Let's play with it. Um, I also see uh, a data science, uh, data scientist stores in which, hey, I want to do some deep computing. This is a perfect platform to do that because we have the capabilities in there. You load data into DashDB. Hey, R is right there. So if you know your R scripts, bam, 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 you can, you can check that out. And when you say cloud, what do you mean cloud? Is it, we're talking soft layer? Are we talking other clouds? Sorry, cloud in, so in just you know, cloud in general, when you're running, you know, oh, yeah, 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 in yeah. the cloud. What, yeah, what, so what I'm cloud? talking specifically, this is running in Bluemix. Yep. Okay, but you know, the whole ecosystem of the cloud as well. Soft layer allows like different software components and different data sources to be pulled in as well. But, but the managed services are in Bluemix. But can Bluemix run on non-soft layer clouds? No. No. The best okay, of my no. knowledge, no. I'm not, not, a, right I'm not a Bluemix diehard. Steve Mills said it best one time. Dave, the brand is IBM. <laughs> <laughs> he was clear. You okay, know. but so, but anyway, I mean it's optimized anyway for, for Bluemix and Bluemix and soft layer. I mean that's IBM's. Play, you know, whether or not, I mean, somebody in IBM can support other clouds, I'm sure, our global services and so forth. Sure, part, sure, but that's sure. Not your yeah, this is, this is dedicated to uh, at least our portfolio there, specifically DashDB is going to be on Bluemix itself. I mean, Cloudin even has like a local version that you can do you know, on prem if you want. Um, and so, like, there's others as well that you can roll up. So, okay. one of the things, um, one of our guys, uh, John Furrier, had uh, dinner with. Andy Jassy from Amazon Web Services a month ago or so. Okay. And he said that right now everything is about databases and Redshift is taking off unlike any other service. And the observation of one of our analysts was once you get all that data native to your cloud, then all the applications follow. Now it sounds like you've got a very cohesive story around databases. Redshift is, you know, Redshift doesn't have, uh, as far as I understand, all the deep analytic capabilities right. of Natiza. Um, it's, it's really sort of a, a port of the Paracel uh, technology. Yep. So it seems like you have a, an opportunity now to really start including uh, or drawing in data from a wide variety of scenarios 
that once the data is there, people build very sophisticated applications on. Is yes. that sort of the scenario or the vision? Yeah, I, I would even back up a little bit and say that one of the, the key things that we have as an advantage is that we do have all this on-prem solutions, hardware and Ateezo boxes, whatever, our pure data for analytics. We have all that out there and it's a story of hybrid. It's, it's not everyone's jumping off and saying, get rid of this. They're saying, let's do a part of our computing in the cloud. And how does that hybrid scenario work? So there's different ways. I mean, it really depends on how you're going to roll out, right? Um, we've seen different ways in which, say, we have a technology called fluid query. Okay, so this is going to be a situation where I have, uh, and it comes with, with Pure Data for Analytics, um, you now are able to, from your, your logical data warehouse, I can put out a query, and that query through fluid query can now go into Hadoop, go into other systems, whether it be on-prem or in the cloud, and then basically do, push that query to where it resides, to push the, where the data resides, and compute there, and then bring it back. Sort of like a logical data warehouse. Bingo. Okay. And so that's a piece of it there. Um, and, and you're going to see, like, as we're building out different integrations as well. I mean, I said before, like, from cloud end to Dash to others, it's certain things work very, very well together, certain things we're building out and we're, we're expanding on. Um, but it's really, when we talk about hybrid computing, there's a whole lot of solutions and different ways to, 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 uh, to solve that with data that we have it today, whether it be on-prem or. Larry, is there, a, is there a Watson play here? Where does that fit in the data services world? Is there a Watson play? Um, geez, so, so there is a Watson play. It's, it's a lot of the stuff that I see today are people playing with Watson services at, in Bluemix, okay? And different things like language translation, et cetera. And then, you know, how, how do we bring that in? How do we store that data? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was going to say for, for right now, um, more in discussions uh, from the big Watson. Because you have to ask yourself, when you say Watson, what do you mean by Watson? Yeah, well, right. Um, one, I would throw this out there, just because there's sometimes, you know, Watson versus Watson Analytics. Yeah, okay. So well, Watson Analytics, yeah, definitely. So let's talk Watson Analytics, because that's kind of your group, right? Yeah, and, and well, yeah, so Watson Analytics itself is, you know, we have native integrations with DashDB. You actually can go in there, like, take their DashDB instance, drop it in there, and study it. Um, so we are working across the board, and that has. Yeah. I say it's your group. It's part of the 17, 18 it's not billion my dollar, you yeah. know. <laughs> giant analytics business of IBM. But, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, that's what's interesting, right? And that's what's fun about this type of role, is that there's so much stuff. And you know, I got to be honest with you, I'm learning every day. What about, you know, we've, we've watched Oracle where they've continued on this path where they're optimizing and squeezing every last drop of blood from a turnip to take an on-prem database and extend it with you know, first engineered appliances and now even the, at the chip level to get really, you know, top end performance, mm -hmm. obviously at very premium prices, but the cloud story hasn't really come together in terms of, um, well, in terms of real elasticity um, or in terms of combining uh, the different types of data management capabilities in a single database. They have that big data appliance that hangs off Exadata. Okay. Um, when you, now that you have, you know, PL SQL, the Oracle uh, stored procedure language in the database, um, when you approach an Oracle customer considering either Exadata on premise or Exadata in the Oracle cloud, what's the message and how do they view, you know, a migration, a potential migration? Yeah, so I think the first thing is we don't really approach it as a religious war, right? It's not, you know, Oracle versus this or that, whatever. It's, hey, we have something dash DB or uh, data du jour, whatever it may be in the portfolio, and say, what is your business problem, right? Um, if it so happens that, hey, we're hitting the wall, we have issues here, we would like to do some of this stuff, or one of the things would be we'd like to leverage mobile technology, or let's say we're doing things on our websites, right? Easy things that are born on the cloud nature. You know, DashDB is a perfect type of store for that, along with Cloud. And I said before that 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 native integration between the two, JSON into Data Warehouse, all of a sudden it becomes a platform that's a logical fit for pretty much anyone. Now you add into that, hey, we can handle you know PL SQL, all that kind of stuff. That makes it a much prettier picture, and it's a lot less of the aggressive, you know, hey, you know, come on over for this reason. It's more or less, do you want to do this? We have this here today. If you'd like to come play with this, let's you know, come try it out. So you created this capability, you kind of going to market with it. What should we be watching for as indicators of success, momentum, you know, your objectives for the, for the business? Yeah, um, I'd say it's a lot more apps based on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, a lot of folks, uh, different solutions, right? And this, one of the things interesting between the cloud in, in, in building that into to cloud data services versus let's say DB2 side of it, right? You have um, a lot of the developer community 
and you have a lot of the old IT architects, DBAs, okay? They're inherently different beasts, but now they're coming together in the same room, you know? And so part of success is going to be that marriage of the two, where we're starting to see a lot more of the on-prem and a lot more traditional players getting more skills and growing into this, hey, I'd like to roll things out quicker now. I would like to tap into the cloud to bring some of that data in. And on the other hand, you also have these developers that are now saying, wait a second, I want to standardize on this. I want to leverage these data sources. Um, I think the marriage of that is going to be big. I also think is um, the ecosystem is very important. It's not to say, hey, you must use all of these services and only these services. It's you use what you need to use. We're going to listen to you and we're going to build up more based on what you want. Would it be fair to say that I, I, we've talked mostly about IT um, and, and corporate developers. Are there ISV developers of SaaS apps who are looking at this and seeing a, a cost-effective and you know, functionally rich platform to start building apps on? Great question, yeah. So some of our early adopters actually were um, some folks that are like, say, intellectual property around, let's say, uh, digital apps or studying, let's say, predictive analytics around uh, TV showings, movie shows, or uh, uh, let's say marketing apps. Yeah, they're tapping into us. And they were some of the first ones to say, hey, because we're creating all this stuff and we're leveraging this in, in a cloud vehicle, why don't we maintain all of our services out there? And since we have such a robust you know, portfolio of it, they can tap into whatever they want when they need. And they could say here today, we, we know that we're going to use X, Y, and Z, but we know maybe in a couple of months we're going to want these other services. So they're going to invest on the platform, and then as they evolve their product, they can move into other directions as well. But yes, it was okay. definitely one of our first, our first uh, approaches was by that community. What, do, what are you seeing, Larry, in terms of the headwinds? That kind of, I mean, there's a lot of tailwinds in this business, right? The momentum, the hype, the yeah. marketing. And, and you know, CEOs reading stuff on the plane saying, hey, we got to do this big data thing. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing with customers and how, we, how is IBM helping them through those? Yeah, I'd say one is, um, this is basic block and intact and stuff, and you laugh at it a little bit, but it's usability. Um, it's just teaching someone how to do this. I mentioned before the dev advocates at, at IBM. Yeah. Um, it's really, you know, talk about, I think about Hadoop four years ago. Hey, anyone here knows Hadoop? Like, oh, you know, a couple of hands go up for the data warehousing conference. Um, but people are learning, they're getting there. But it was a mountain that people had to get over. But now all of a sudden you have, you, know, you get back to the whole developer market, developer economy, people are bringing their new languages, their new codes, their new skills. And you're like, geez, where do I start? Where do I end? Um, we're helping people learn. And we're helping, I mentioned before, like these boilerplates and, and uh, kind of blueprints. We're putting it together. We're taking our experts and saying, let's show you how to do this. I'm like the Lego directions, go from point A to point B to point C. And at the end, you're going to have this kind of a product. And then you know, from there, you can become the master builder, right? And, and go in a different directions. But I think a lot of it's training. Um, and a lot of it is helping people out and helping them, you know, dealing with the cloud specifically. The hardest thing is I don't have a customer right, right in front of me. Someone could be hitting the cloud on their own, middle of the night around the world. I have to make darn sure that I have the right supply of, of content to train them and to guide them on what to do or how to do it. I was at the uh, Facebook at scale conference a couple weeks ago and um, a program manager from Google said something interesting. Because you know, Amazon, um, Azure, Google are all building these proprietary services, the big data services. By proprietary, I mean you know, not the Hadoop open source. Right, right. Um, but they're also building integrated development and operations tools that manage the life cycle to, for, for simplicity of development and operations of these multi-service applications. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're, that you're focused on? Um, where, are you, where are you in that effort? Um, so sorry, simplifying the... Well, the idea that like in uh, in the world of 20, 25 years ago, we had um, Microsoft Foundation classes, okay. you know, or Visual Basic to make it easy to write Windows apps. Yep. But now we need um, tools that make it easier to write, to write these sort of big data analytic apps, but not only to develop them, but to operate them. Yep. Because that's so much harder. Um, and that these vendors were saying, yeah, that's a problem we've got to tackle and it's very hard to do it in a multi-vendor way because you, know, you have to make a whole lot of assumptions. Is that, is that uh, you know, a part of the, the vision for what you're building? Yeah, so, so I'll say part of it is, is a little bit out of, not my direct and my scope, but you know, some of the, th the elements are from a programming perspective, you know, we are supporting and growing 
um, and making it easier within a composable service environment, things like Node.js or you know, Python, other things like that, to have the capability within Bluemix. But we're following that model to help bring that in and, and do it from there. Okay, um, so my last question, which is maybe give us a, a, a richer picture of what those composable services are. The composable, which ones? The, the composable services in data management and in maybe the, 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 the things that analyze that data. Oh yeah, so I mean, when I'm saying composable services, I'm talking about the entire, when I say cloud data services, and I'm saying this is our data, like services that are in the cloud, that's, that is the, cl the, the composable service. So things like- Everything on Bluemix. Correct, and so that's the vision of Bluemix in general is composable services. Now my view of that is, hey, we have the data se section of it, but there's other teams that have their, let's say, net new or third party composable services that are in there as well. And that's where I get to the whole idea of Lego blocks, that this oh, is- Oh, because those are exposable as services as well. Yeah, and they're all, they, different services do different things, yeah. and they have different APIs and all that kind of stuff, but yes, as a whole, it's, it's this ecosystem of services, so I come in and I want to build, I can use this to- And the intent is to deliver that end to end, I mean, that's the, what you know, your vision it's, is that you put It's forth, like a right? sandbox for a develop, I mean, I don't say a sandbox, but it's like a playground for developers, to be honest with you, and right. um, we're just pumping in more and more stuff as, as the days go on. With a lot of uh, stuff to play on, yeah. All right, Larry, we've got to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and telling your story. It's an exciting time for you guys, for yourself personally and IBM generally. So, Great. thank you. Hey, thanks for having thanks. me. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from New York City. Pillars 37 at Strata plus Hadoop World. This is Big Data NYC. We'll be right back. <laughs>